Hi, this is Alan from CDLTrainingSpot.com. In this video, I'm going to be giving you 19 tips for driving a moving truck. If you're new to the channel, uh, the first time here, basically we talk about everything that has to do with having a CDL, driving a truck, uh, everything for experienced truck drivers, brand new truck drivers, drivers to be. So if, if you are interested, take a look around. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. At the very least, just help me out by giving us a like. By hitting the thumbs up if you do that that helps us out a lot all right so let's move on so we're gonna get started with the 19 tips uh, for moving a driving truck so you've decided to make a move and you have a lot of stuff and you want to rent a, a, a truck for it a small box truck like a u-haul and you're not really sure how to drive it because maybe the only car that you've driven up until now has been a small passenger car maybe a SUV or maybe like a small pickup truck. Driving a box truck, it's not very difficult, but it is different than driving any of those other cars, like a regular car or an SUV. So there are some differences. One thing though I do want to talk about, I'm not going to go too in depth in this video, um, of is if you're thinking do you need a CDL, a commercial driver's license for uh, box trucks, you usually don't. And the reason is because the, uh, the weight limit of those are 26,000 pounds or less. So typically like when you have those, you don't need a CDL for it. So that's one thing you can get out of the way. Driver's license, you could just get by with a regular driver's license. The driver's license that you would use to drive a car, your SUV, or your pickup truck, you don't need a commercial driver's license. The only way you would need a commercial driver's license would be if you were driving a vehicle or a truck that had a, uh, a weight limit of 26,001 pounds uh, or greater, which moving trucks, they do not. So when you go to U-Haul, Whatever company you go through and you're renting out a truck, you don't have to worry about having a CDL, right? If you're still unsure or you don't trust me, when you get there, just talk to the people that are working there. Just ask them, do you need a CDL to drive it? CDL to drive it in every state in the United States, you, you're going to find that you do not need a CDL. Tip number one is use your side mirrors. More so than you would in your regular passenger car, your SUV, your pickup truck. When you're driving a box truck, even some of the smaller ones, there's a lot of... Uh, blind spots that are out there and you won't be able to see around you so don't think you know don't get too comfortable don't don't think oh well, i'm just going to drive it like i would a car and look occasionally into my mirrors you should really be looking into your mirrors all the time if you talk to like an actual truck driver it's very common truck drivers always are looking around them just trying to figure out what's going on it, anything that you do is going to be different in the box truck and that's to, whether you get a small one or a big one that rule always applies make sure that you're checking your side mirrors all the time you know what's going on around you so then that's going to determine how you're going to drive as well tip number two when driving a moving truck make sure you give yourself some extra space even more than you would in a car just because it's going to take longer for that truck especially when it's loaded the one that you're driving it's, it's going to take longer for that truck to stop so if the car in front of you makes a sudden stop you're going to have to compensate from that so however you would drive in your regular car you should probably double that right if you're driving you know a certain amount in the distance comfortably behind someone you should drive even further behind because you really need that space because when you hit those brakes, it's not going to stop as quickly as you're, you're used to in your passenger car. So that's tip number two. Tip number three, don't expect to go fast. I know you're in a hurry. I know you want to get to your new home or your new wherever you're moving to. You want to get there quickly. You want to get everything unloaded. Maybe you're on, a, on the clock and you're worried that you're going to have to pay for more money. Trust me, it's worth it. Just take your time. Don't expect to go very fast because you're just not going to be able to. And if you do go fast, the risk of getting in, a, in an accident is going to increase. So really make sure that you just kind of keep a, 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 a speed that's at about the speed limit. You really shouldn't be going over the speed limit at all. So stay at or slightly below that speed limit and you should be okay. Tip number four is get yourself an atlas. Not really just getting an atlas, but actually planning out your trip before you go. So you know exactly where you're gonna turn, exactly where, you expect, where you're expected to go, what time you expect to be there, how long it's going to take. You can use apps like electronics if you want for that, or GPS, they work great. But remember, sometimes they don't work great. There is, if something breaks with them, or you don't get service, or it runs out of battery, just something goes wrong, you just wanna have make sure you have a backup. And usually the best one for that is to have like a paper atlas. So that's tip number four. Number five, for when you're driving a moving truck, is to make wider turns. Uh, this is just something that you have to do and you'll notice that you know driving and steering a moving truck or any type of box truck truck is a lot different you have to compensate more for this bigger vehicle so when you're making those turns make sure that you're making turns that are just a little bit wider to make sure that you clear that turn and you clear that intersection safely like that's the goal six make sure that your load is secure this is the the, the most common thing that 
the everyday mover neglects. Well, they just don't secure the whatever they're they're carrying their cargo. Uh, truck drivers do this all the time. You really need to make the time to do this and to do this correctly. Uh, just make sure that when you're putting things into the truck that you're using tie downs, you're using rope, you're using things that are going from one side of the trailer or the uh, 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 the box to the other and you're tying things down. Because if you don't do that, you're going to see that things are going to move around. And when things move around in the back of that moving truck, then they're going to have a tendency to break. So tie things down if you can uh, as much as possible. Right, tip number seven is to use moving blankets. Don't just use like a regular, uh, like a tablecloth or like a regular blanket. They don't work as well as moving blankets do. If you've ever, if you've never seen a moving blanket, they kind of look like a quilt, except they're, they're just a little bit more thick. And they're really good to put around things like furniture that you're afraid that you might nick up or scratch up that you don't want that to happen to. So that's definitely something that you should do is make sure that you're really taking the time, like I said in the last tip, to tie everything down and then the things that you don't want to scratch, you have to prevent them from scratching, use moving blankets for that. If you're unsure of what those look like, uh, it, there, I'll put a link to some of them down below. Those are Amazon links as well, so you don't have to worry, it's not going to take you to some like really like weird site or anything like that, but they're actual like, uh, you'll see on Amazon, you can get them pretty cheap, uh, they're not expensive at all. And you could reuse them, which is great too. Tip number eight, make sure you park with a plan. And I'll explain what that means. But what I'm saying is when you park, make sure that you're parking somewhere where you don't have to back out. So if you're, if you're stopping at a restaurant to get something to eat, make sure that you're pulling into a spot, even if it's a little bit further away from the, from the restaurant, pull into the spot so that when it's time to leave, you don't have to back out. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you put yourself in a situation where you're pulling into a spot and then when it's time to leave, you pull just straight out of the spot and you continue to where your destination is. Another thing is uh, when you're parking, make sure that you park your, uh, your truck, especially if you have your stuff in it. Make sure that when you park it, you put it somewhere where it's visible to you. So if you're in the restaurant, if you're in the store, that it's still visible to you, like why you're eating or at least like part of the time while you're in the store. You don't want to leave your belongings in there. Uh, especially for like a really long period of time. You just never know who's who's out and about. So make sure that you, you take care of your stuff and then plan your parking. Tip number nine, take care of your pets. There, by no means should you be leaving your pet in the back with the cargo, right? You shouldn't do that. Your pets, whether you have uh, a fish, bird, a cat, a dog, a snake, any other type of reptile, you need to put those in the front with you. Those should not be in the back because the temperatures uh, back there, if it's hot outside, get really, really hot. And if it's cold outside, it gets really, really cold because there are no vents that are going to heat that up or cool it down. So it's really, really dangerous. And plus, even if you put them in something like a cage, there's just a high risk that something's going to bump into them, something's going to happen. It's dark. It's scary back there for them. So don't do that. So make sure that you have your pets with you. Your pets should be in the front with you. All right, tip, uh, tip number 10 is be careful when passing. Actually, if you're on a two-lane road, you really shouldn't be doing any passing at all. Just try to minimize how much passing you do, and just be aware that if you're driving like in the, the left lane, that's typically for traffic that's moving faster. So you don't want to be in that lane, because if you're always going to that lane, then you're always you're constantly going to be having to go back and forth doing a lot of lane changes as you're getting out of the way of the people coming up behind you. So try to stay in the right lane as much as possible. Try to avoid passing as much as possible too, because it goes back to the stuff I talked about in one of the other tips, is you're just not going to see very well, especially if you're not used to driving a moving truck or a box truck. It's going to be difficult for you. You're not going to be able to, to uh, navigate as, as well as you, or drive as well as you would in your regular car, because you're not going to have access to the mirrors like you do in your car, especially that rear view mirror. In the moving truck, you won't have that rear view mirror where you could see directly what's going on behind you. So again, when passing, be really careful and try to avoid passing as much as possible. Just make sure you're going at a constant speed and you're going relatively slow and predictable uh, to the people around you. Tip number 11, inspect the truck. So before you leave, inspect the truck, make sure everything's okay. Usually the company that you run from, they're gonna do this for you, but you can't always rely on that. So a couple of things that you should check on, uh, just check, make, check the, the uh, tires, make sure they have enough air in them, make sure that your mirrors and your windows are clean, make sure that your turn signals work, make sure that your brake lights work. Those are the important things. So before you head out, really make sure that those things work because that's going to make you safer and it's going to make the people around you safer too. If you like these, these tips, uh, I do have some more. I know I promised I was going to go to 19. 
Uh, but to get the to to get the rest of those tips, you have to you have to uh, head on over to my website. Uh, so the website I'm going to put a link for it in the description below. Uh, it, but it's uh, cdltrainingspot.com, <coughs> and then <coughs> excuse me on there you'll find uh, the I'll, I'll give you the link and it'll go right to the uh, 19 tips, including the ones that I already gave you, and it'll give you a couple more. And if, if you're wondering. Uh, like what do those uh, moving blankets look like? Uh, there's a link also below in the description. It'll take you right to Amazon uh, where you could take a look at those. I do have to say though, like since you are gonna be taking Amazon for it, uh, every time you do make a purchase on Amazon, it does help us out. We are compensated for it. So we get like a small amount of the purchase uh, that, you know, that you make. So doesn't nothing bad happens to you. A little bit of good or a little bit of love for us though, goes a long way. Uh, just keeps us uh, afloat and allowing us to continue to make videos and uh, uh, a website that has been useful to a lot of uh, new CDL drivers and experienced drivers. So before you go, make sure that you hit the like button. Let us know if it helped you out. If you want more information about a, a CDL or be, being a truck driver, uh, then consider subscribing to the channel. Try to do a lot more videos that are going to be coming out very soon. Uh, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.